Good afternoon. It is wonderful to see all of you who could return back with us to worship once again. This afternoon, I want to start us off with a bit of a story. It's a bit of a famous story. Some of you may or may not have heard of it before, but I thought it was fitting seeing as it's, it was Veterans Day yesterday, so I wanted to tell this story. It's about the Dorchester. It was around, happened in World War II. The Dorchester was a troop transport ship that was used during the Second World War. It was sunk by a German torpedo in the Labrador Sea on February 3, 1943. As the ship began to sink and its passengers began to abandon it, four lieutenants, George Fox, Alexander Good, John Washington, and Clark Poling, who also happened to be Army chaplains, of various faiths began handing out life jackets, including their own, to soldiers and directing people to safety. As the ship began to disappear between these waves, the four chaplains linked arms together and began to sing as they went down with the transport ship. Beloved, this is a really sad but wonderful story at the same time about sacrifice makes you think almost about the sacrifice that Jesus had on that cross for us. <laughs> Putting other people's lives in front of your own. That kind of self-sacrifice is what we need to have in today's world. That kind of self-sacrifice is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about the value of sacrifice in this afternoon's lesson. If you'll turn with me, we're going to start in Romans chapter 3 and verse 25. Romans chapter 3 and verse 25 is where we will begin. Romans chapter 3 and verse 25. Romans chapter 3 and verse 25 says, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. You see, beloved, Jesus Christ is the propitiation for our sins. Through Him our sins are in the past. His blood covers our sins of the past. When we are washed in the blood, our sins are made no more. He is the propitiation for our sins, beloved, and that is important. That shows the value of sacrifice right there. Without His sacrifice for us, without Him putting us before Himself, our sins would still be there. We would have no chance of having eternal life in heaven. Through Him, that is the only way we have the opportunity of going to heaven. Now, I want you to keep your fingers in Romans, but we're going to go to Ephesians right quick and read chapter 5 and verse 2. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 2. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 2 says, And walk in love. As Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Now, beloved, this is an immensely powerful verse that people often overlook. Whenever they read their Bible, they won't think nothing about this verse most of the time. But, beloved, let me tell you that this verse is immensely powerful. It packs a lot of punch behind it. It's a haymaker punch if you want to put it into boxing terms. It's a knockout punch. This verse is extremely important. It tells us that we're to walk like Jesus walks. Remember we had that study last week, or a couple weeks ago, about the power of the mind, and how we're supposed to have the mind of Christ. But beloved, I'm here to tell you, we not only have to have the mind of Christ, we have to walk like Christ walks as well. We have to live like Christ lived. It tells us right here that we need to walk in love as Christ that also had loved us. Remember, beloved, we have to love like Christ. We have to walk the way Christ walked in His life. And notice the last part of the verse. This is the really powerful part right here. It tells us, 
for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Beloved, Christ dying on the cross, that was not an accident. That had a purpose. It was meant to happen. And it was appeasing to God. It appeased God. There's a song. Um, I don't remember the title of it at this time. But it says, The wrath of God was satisfied. That, that's very much true. The wrath of God was satisfied at that time. He, he was satisfied by the sacrifice of Jesus for us. It was an appeasement for God. So He would not take out our, our sins on us. He was the propitiation for us, beloved. Now we're going to be going back to Romans, which is why I told you to keep your finger on Romans. This time we're going to go to chapter 12 and read verses 1 through 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2 reads, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. We're going to stop right there, beloved. We are a living sacrifice, beloved. What that means is everything we do, this is why we need to walk like Christ walked and have the mind of Christ. Because we are that living sacrifice. Everything we say and do is a sacrifice unto God. And it needs to be acceptable unto God. Beloved, it knows it says it is your reasonable service. It's what we need to be willing to do. We'll continue reading in verse 2. It says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Beloved, we cannot be conformed by the world. The world not, should not mold us and make us who we are, but God should make us who we are. The Bible should make us who we are. The reading of the Bible should mold us and make us who we ought to be, beloved. Not the world. Now, if you'll turn with me, we're going to go to 1 John chapter 2, and we're going to read verse 2. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 2. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 2. First John chapter 2 and verse 2. First John chapter 2 and verse 2 says, And He is the propitiation for our sins. It's repeating itself. Remember Romans 3.25, when God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, He is the propitiation for our sins, beloved. But notice the last part of the verse. And not for ours only, but also for the sins for the whole world. Beloved, what that means is He's not only the propitiation for my sins, but for your sins as well, for your neighbor's sins, for your brother and your sister's sins, for your mom and your granddad, for a, for a total stranger halfway across the world, for somebody you've never met. He is the propitiation for everybody's sins. It doesn't matter who they are. They just have to know. It's important that they know, beloved. We have to tell them. That's the only way they will know is if we tell them the truth. And it's important for us to do that, beloved. It's very important. Now, if you'll turn with me, we're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 2 and read verse 5. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5 says, Ye also as lively stones are built upon a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices 
acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Beloved, do you know what a spiritual sacrifice is? That's song and prayer. That is song and prayer. That is what a spiritual sacrifice is. Now, if you'll turn with me, we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 13, verses 15 through 16. Hebrews 13, verses 15 through 16. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Let's stop right there. That relates to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Spiritual sacrifices. Fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Spiritual sacrifices. Sacrifice of praise to God continually. I'm going to give you a couple verses right here. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, Colossians 3.16, and Ephesians 5.17. Those all relate to spiritual sacrifices right there. And you can go look those up sometime if you'd like. They relate to songs and prayer. But those are all fruit of our lips. Those are all spiritual sacrifices that we are to do. And we'll continue reading the rest of the verse. But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Beloved, whenever we do those good sacrifices, those spiritual sacrifices, God is well pleased with us. He is well pleased with the spiritual sacrifices that we do. We are going to do those spiritual sacrifices daily. Pray without ceasing. We're supposed to pray without ceasing, beloved. We're supposed to sing songs to God and praise Him. It says right there to praise God continually in verse 15 of Hebrews 13. It's important that we do that, beloved. You see, we don't do the sacrifices like they did in the Old Testament. We don't go get a young calf or go get a lamb and put them on an altar and kill them and burn them. To bring up sacrifices. You see, Jesus is our propitiation. That is what we read in Romans 3.25 and 1 John 2, 2, verse 2. He is our propitiation. He has covered our sins. We don't need to do those sacrifices anymore. You see, beloved, we do not do physical sacrifices anymore. The sacrifices we do now are spiritual. If you look, if you remember in 1 Peter 2, verse 5, it says, Ye also as live stones are built upon a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. Beloved, we are the priesthood. Jesus is the high priest, but we are still the priesthood. We are to offer up sacrifices. That's the job of the priesthood. We just don't do physical sacrifices. We do spiritual sacrifices. And it's our job to do those spiritual sacrifices. That is what we are to do. That is our job. That is our responsibility to do that. Now, we're going to stay in Hebrews, and this is the last set of verses we're going to read. We're going to go to chapter 10. And we're going to read verse 10 and verse 14. Hebrews chapter 10, we're going to read verse 10 and verse 14. By the which will we are sanctified, or made holy, through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, once and for all. Now skipping to verse 14, it says, For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified, or made holy. That's what sanctified means, is to be made holy. You see, beloved, the only way that we can ever go before God is if we are holy. We have to be holy to go before God. And if you notice right there in that verse, the only way 
we can be holy is through Christ Jesus our Lord and Master. We can't go before God any other way. We have to be made holy. That is our calling. That is what we are to do, beloved. Christ Jesus does that for us, and He did that whenever He died on that cross. You see, beloved, that's the value of sacrifice. Is He gives us that opportunity to be made holy. He gives us that opportunity to go to heaven. Without the opportunity, there's no way we could go through that narrow gate on our own. There's no physical possible way for us to go to heaven without that sacrifice of Christ Jesus. Beloved, that is the value of sacrifice. Now, if you're here this afternoon and you have not had the opportunity to put on your Lord in baptism and you'd like to do so, or you have need of prayers or anything of the sort, we ask that you please come forward as we stand together and sing.